Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture where I'm going to cover the topic of the Irish court system. So I'm going to introduce you to um, the Irish court system and the structure. So we look at the administration of justice as one part of the court system and then we will look at the structure uh, of the court system in Ireland which follows um, a hierarchy of court, uh, the hierarchy of uh, judicial decision making or the hierarchy of the courts. So the purpose of the lecture um, is to allow students to be able to achieve particular learning outcomes and in the context of the Irish court system I'm going to take you through um, a lecture that will allow you to be able to compare and contrast the jurisdiction of each of the courts within the hierarchical um, judicial system and to be able to identify and explain the role um, or the jurisdiction of each of the courts and the constitutional foundations um, for our court system and the structure of our courts. So initially we had a court system that was set out, it was the provision was founded in the 1922 constitution and this provided for a court system that was later established in the Courts of Justice Act 1924. Uh, but this court system was based on British rule and the constitution of 1937, the new um, constitution in Ireland, our current constitution, set out um, the provisions or the foundations for the development of a new court system that would remove us from the old uh, British rule and Br British influence. Um, so if you look in the Constitution you'll find within Article 34 to 38 they set out the core um, foundational system of the Irish court system. So the court system as I said the foundation or the source of law it comes from our Constitution but it, the detail has been um, established under the Courts Establishment and Constitution Act of 1961. So the establishment of our new court system has been set out in legislation, which is um, another source of law within the Irish legal system. So we're going to look at, as I said, we're going to look at uh, the, the court system which is based, it has its foundations in the Constitution and then the structure of the courts, in particular looking at um, the hierarchy of the court system that we have in Ireland. So we have a hierarchy going um, from top to bottom, if you will, going from the Court of Final Appeal, which is our Supreme Court, all the way down to Courts of Local and Limited Jurisdiction, which, which is the District Court. So I'm going to take you through um, each of the court structures and compositions and um, the, the jurisdiction and I'll explain some of those terms as I'm going through the lecture. So the constitution as I said sets out our structure and the structure is that we have a court of final appeal known as the Supreme Court through um, a recent amendment we now have a court of appeal that sits between the Supreme Court and the High Court. So we have a court of final appeal, a court of appeal and then we have Court of First Instances, which are referred to as the High Court, which has full and original um, jurisdiction to hear all cases in civil and criminal matters. And then we have Courts of Local and Limited Jurisdiction, which are the Circuit Court and the District Court, and they're based or organised um, on local and regional basis. And we'll go through each of these different uh, courts and their composition and structure. So first of all, just to talk about um, the administration of justice which as I said referred to earlier is found in articles um, in particular in articles 34.1 of the Constitution and also article 37.1 of the Constitution. So I have a quote here for you to have a look at and just to think a little bit about it and to pull out um, I suppose the essential elements of what administration for justice means in the Irish court system. So. Uh, justice shall be administered in courts established by law, by judges, appointed in a manner that is provided for by the Constitution and save in such special and limited cases as may be prescribed by law shall be heard and administered in public. So there's a number of things here and, and I'll take you through them. Um, the first one being justice shall be administered in courts, so we must have a court system by judges and 
shall be heard in public. So those are very important um, functions of the court system in relation to the administration of justice. And then we have Article 37 point one, which basically says that nothing in this constitution shall operate to invalidate laws that provide or give um, limited functions to other bodies um, to act in a judicial-like capacity, except for um, in criminal matters. So we have Article 37 here that is basically saying that um, the legislature can provide in law um, for the delegation of powers of a judicial-like nature to other bodies other than, other than the courts. Um, so the importance here is that it will be limited functions, so it can give delegate limited functions to other bodies and, uh, and examples of bodies in this context are often state bodies such as um, the Labour Court, the Ombudsman, Arbitration and other statutory bodies are examples such as um, the Law Society of Ireland. It has um, statutory functions uh, in relation to the regulation of, of, the, of solicitors here in Ireland. Um, so the, the, the important um, aspect here is that their functions are limited. So they have limited functions and this is often um, will be seen in the law through a appeal to the circuit court or an appeal to the high court from any decision that may be given uh, by a state body. So for example, um, in the Law Society of Ireland, they have a function in relation to the discipline of the profession of the solicitors, um, but any, any matters that warrant um, issues in relation to um, due the administration of justice, there will be an appeal um, to the High Court for, uh, for an example. And there was a case in relation to that where um, the Law Society did not have the power to strike a solicitor off, off the list. That is to be kept for the, for the High Court. Um, so the functions of the court in relation to the administration of justice. So the function of the court is the interpretation and the application of law, law being either constitutional provision or statutory provision or, or case law, so the doctrine of precedent um, and earlier decisions of, of the courts in the judicial hierarchy. So importantly, the administration of justice centres around um, the power of judges to interpret and to apply the law. So. I referred to earlier um, an Article 34.1 of the Constitution. It says that justice shall be administered in court by judges um, and generally heard in public. So the exception to the um, cases being heard in public is, is the in-camera, is the in-camera rule, which basically means cases will be heard in, in private, um, but only in exceptional, um, in exceptional circumstances. And the Constitution gives authority to the legislature to enact legislation to provide for situations where cases can be heard otherwise than in public. Um, so I'm going to give an example here. And otherwise than in public, the in-camera rule generally will mean that members of the public are not allowed in the courtroom when a case is being heard and typically it will be just the judge, the parties and their legal representatives or the jury if, if, that's, if that's applicable. Um, so when the, when the constitution generally says that um, it gives authority to um, prescribe by law or as will be established by law, it generally will mean that the legislature, the Oireachtas in Ireland, which was the sole and exclusive um, lawmaking body in the country, will enact a piece of legislation to provide the detail in relation to, in this context, in relation to when cases will be heard in private or in camera. So there's a number of um, there's four different circumstances here um, that are provided for under the Court Supplemental Provisions Act of 1961. So in the 1961 Act it says that cases can be heard otherwise than in public um, in applications of an urgent nature such as habeas corpus, um, ex parte for example applications might be heard in camera, uh, matrimonial causes and matters, lunacy and minor matters, 
and proceedings involving the disclosure of a secret manufacturing um, process. So those are a couple of examples and I want to just um, illustrate the application of the in-camera rule by looking at matrimonial cause or the area of, um, of family law and how it operates in that context. So we've had since um, the 1961 Act that I've just referred to that provides for exceptions to cases being heard in public, so cases being heard in camera um, in the subject area of family law. So this um, provision has been very strictly applied from 1961 up until 2004 where we had um, another enactment, another piece of legislation from the Oireachtas which basically relaxed the in-camera rule in the context of or in the area of family law. Um, and the reason for this is that there had been a number of reports um, published criticising um, the in-camera rule in the context of family law because of course it um, was a barrier, an obstruction to access to justice. Um, so people and the legal profession in particular didn't know how the law was operating, how the reasoning and the arguments of the judges um, when they were determining decisions in the area of family law. So you have the Civil Liability and Courts Act of 2004, which amends the in-camera rule to allow for other um, key stakeholders to have access to um, judicial decision making in the context of family law. So we had the relaxation of the rule. It allowed for um, barristers and solicitors or other researchers um, to prepare and publish court, court judgments in the family law area. Um, fast forward then until 2000, 2013 and we had another amendment and another relaxation of the in-camera rule um, under the Courts and Civil Law Miscellaneous Provisions Act and this basically relaxed the in-camera rule again to ensure or to allow the media to have access and to report on the area of, fa of family law. Um, the in-camera rule is there to really to protect um, in the context of family law um, it's it's about the balancing the balancing of the private rights of the family and the right of the public to know or to have access to the law and to judicial decision making so um, cases should usually be heard in public with the exception of cases as provided for in law um, can be heard in camera and as I said, one example is in the area of family law. So just a couple of terms that I want to um, explain a little bit um, in relation to the court system and the jurisdiction of the court. So there's, um, we've just spoke about the administration of justice and the system of the court that has been set up through both the constitution and then um, through legislation. And now we're going to look at um, the hierarchy or the structure of the court system and the jurisdiction of each court and the function of each court in, in relation to civil and criminal matters. So what does jurisdiction mean? So jurisdiction basically means to say the law or it's where a court has jurisdiction, it has the power to hear and to determine a case. Um, you'll also um, hear terms like local and limited jurisdiction and local and limited jurisdiction generally relate to the circuit court and the district court who have local and limited jurisdiction according to um, the constitution and to, to legislation and local means that it is local it's a, it's jurisdiction is re related to the geographical uh, location and limited is in typically in relation to um, either limited to a monetary value or the, the um, term of imprisonment if it's the criminal jurisdiction, a monetary value if it's compensation and it's the civil jurisdiction um, or else the subject matter or the legal issue at hand. So you'll see that it is limited by um, maybe the subject matter or um, a monetary limit or a monetary amount or indeed um, a term of imprisonment if it's the criminal jurisdiction. But we're going to go through each of them according to um, to each court within the Irish court structure. Original jurisdiction refers then to um, the, 
the again the authority or the power of a court to hear and decide a case. So for example the High Court has full original jurisdiction in all matters of civil and criminal. However um, the District Court and the Circuit Court does have original jurisdiction but it's limited as I said generally by legal subject or by monetary value or term of imprisonment. And then appellate jurisdiction refers to the authority of um, a particular court to hear a case on appeal. And in within the Irish court system and the appellate, the appellate jurisdiction, there's generally um, two formats formats of appeal. So you can have a de novo appeal, which is a full rehearing of the appeal. For example, a case that has been decided in the district court and is appealed to the circuit court, there will be a full uh, de novo rehearing of the case. So that's one of the appellate um, the for forms of appeal. And the second form of appeal is um, an appeal on a point of law or a case stated. So often you will have um, an appeal on a point of law from the district court or the circuit court to the high court, where a district court judge might um, pose a question and ask the High Court to interpret a particular statutory provision um, to determine if the District Court has applied that provision correctly um, in the context and the facts of a particular case. So we're going to go through the, the hierarchy, as I said, of, of the courts and, and the different jurisdictions, civil and criminal in each, and, and the composition as well in relation to um, each of the courts. But we also refer back to, to the source of setting up the court structure and the court system. We have Article 36 of the Constitution, which um, basically is the authority stating that the courts shall be regulated in accordance with law, which is the function then of the Oireachtas um, to legislate for this area. And Basically, Article 36 talks about the regulation um, of the distribution of the jurisdiction within each court. And the approach of the legislature has been then to divide up the functions um, between, between each court. So I have a diagram here of an example of the hierarchy of the court system. So you'll see um, the, civil, the civil jurisdiction and the criminal jurisdiction will go up through the hierarchy of course, typically in the same way, except for um, with the criminal jurisdiction, um, you will see that the High Court um, sits as a central criminal court when it's sitting in its criminal jurisdiction, for example, and it's in its civil jurisdiction, it will sit as a High Court. There's also divisions in the civil jurisdiction where it might sit to hear commercial cases. So you'll have the commercial court and there's um, a list for commercial cases that go through the civil jurisdiction um, of, of the High Court. So we start off with the District Court, the Circuit Court, the High Court, um, and it goes on then to the Court of Appeal and then the Supreme Court. So the Court of Appeal is a new level within our court structure um, and that came into play when the Constitution was amended to insert a Court of Appeal between the High Court and Supreme Court. And the function of the Court of Appeal is that it, it is appellate jurisdiction, um, but it was mainly brought in to reduce the backlog of cases that was going to the Supreme Court. Um, so now we will have appeals from the High Court typically going to the Court of Appeal rather than the Supreme Court and this allows the Supreme Court to have time to deal with cases um, that have con constitutional of constitutional public interest typically um, will be kept for the Supreme Court. So we'll go through each of the different courts and we will look at the composition and, and the jurisdiction as I said. So in our district court system we have 24 districts around Ireland, so it's it's a it's local. It has a local jurisdiction. It typically consists of um, there will always be a president. So there's a president of the district court, and it has 63 ordinary judges. So you'll find from the district court up to the supreme court, you'll see the number of the judges being reduced as you go up. The district court takes a lot of the a lot of the um, is probably one of the busiest the busiest the busiest of, of the courts. So there's 63 ordinary judges that sit in, in the 24 districts. Matters are usually heard by judges alone. So you'll typically have one district court judge sitting to, um, to hear a case. And it has original jurisdiction. 
again to hear cases across criminal and um, civil jurisdictions and we will have a look at, um, at, at each jurisdiction. So if you look at the district court and its criminal jurisdiction, it's limited, so it's local in that it's limited in geographical area and then it's also limited to minor offences. So there's been no definition of what minor offences um, means, but typically a minor offence um, will have two characteristics. It will be minor in the sense of the severity of punishment and minor in the sense of um, the culpability of the, of the moral behaviour or the conduct. So for example, um, murder is not a minor offence that is held for the jurisdiction of the High Court, for example. Um, so minor offences um, are typically heard in the district court and generally we look at the severity of punishment which is a maximum of 12 months sentence within within the district court for example. Um, so there's no jury trials um, which differentiate the district court from, from the circuit court system um, in relation to the criminal, criminal jurisdiction. So examples, I have examples here, so if we're talking about minor offences generally it's minor theft, minor assault cases and most road traffic offences um, will be heard in, in the district court. It also has jurisdiction to hear um, cases in relation to the granting of bail and there's an appeal from the district court to the high court in relation to, um, to bail and as I said there is generally a maximum term of imprisonment for 12 months or a fine um, of 5,000 euros. So the civil jurisdiction of the district court, and I said earlier in relation to um, the limited function is typically will be, especially in the, in the civil jurisdiction, it will be a monetary value or monetary limit. And in the context of the district court, it is 15,000 um, euros. So it will hear civil claims that do not exceed 15,000 uh, 15, euros in the district court and it's also limited to the types of cases that it can hear so for example it'll hear cases on the subject matter of contract law um, and family law and it would be limited for example in the context of family law or childcare proceedings to um, custody and access uh, whereas it cannot hear cases in relation to judicial separation, nullity or divorce, which belongs to the jurisdiction of the High Court and, and actually also the Circuit Court has concurrent jurisdiction um, in relation to that, to that area. So, as I said, it does deal with um, family law, but it is restricted or limited to hearing cases around maintenance, custody and access. Also, um, it can hear and has original jurisdiction to hear cases under the domestic violence legislation. So it can give um, orders in relation to barring orders, safety orders and protection orders. It also has a jurisdiction to renew liquor licenses. It's the renewal of liquor licenses. You will make an application to the district court, but if it's for a new liquor license, you typically make the application to, um, to the circuit court. So that's the district court and the circuit court then, there are eight circuits um, in Ireland and they are based on, on a regional basis around the country. Um, so we have eight circuits and that, that will consist of a president of the circuit court and then there's 37 ordinary members um, of the circuit court and you'll find this in the composition of, of every court you the president of um, the district court is an ex officio or special member of the circuit court and you'll have the same across all so you'll have the president of the circuit court will be ex officio member of the high court and the president of the high court will be an ex officio member of the circuit court of the Court of Appeal and, and so on. So matters are typically heard by one judge sit sitting alone um, when it's in its civil jurisdiction and criminal jurisdiction and in its criminal jurisdiction sorry it will sit with a jury so um, the constitution says that um, criminal matters heard um, on true indictable offences will be um, heard by a judge and a jury. So there are cases also um, in the civil jurisdiction of the circuit court where it will be um, where a jury 
will be will hear the case and that is in the area of um, defamation is, is one example so just to look at the different jurisdictions then in relation to the circuit court so <coughs> It is a court of local and limited jurisdiction, as I said, um, similar to the, the district court. So it also has jurisdiction in relation to civil and criminal matters. Um, it has original jurisdiction. So typically, depending on either um, the, the monetary um, value of the award that will be given, um, so the monetary limit and also the, the subject, the subject matter of um, the, the, the area of law. It also has appellate jurisdiction, so it both hears appeals from the district court and can appeal cases to the high court within the judicial hierarchy. Um, so the civil jurisdiction in the circuit court, um, again, it's related to compensation. So you can take a case, usually it will be taken to the, um, the circuit court in relation to either um, private law areas such as contract law, tort law, um, where the compensation will um, exceed 15,000 but up to a maximum of um, 75,000. 75, so there has been some changes and some amendments to the jurisdiction of the circuit court. So typically, um, claims should not exceed 75,000. However, on the consent of all the parties involved, the circuit court can hear cases that will exceed that, that, will exceed that amount. And that change really was made, um, one of the main reasons it was made was a monetary reason again, was to ensure um, or to reduce the legal costs for litigants that might have to go to the high court. Um, so it's, it's cheaper. To go, to go to the circuit court. Um, so again, it can hear all types of cases in contract and tort law. It can also hear disputes in relation to um, land law and can give uh, many of the equitable remedies, um, such as injunctions and specific uh, perform performance um, and damages, obviously, also. So when it deals with family law matters, it is referred to as um, the circuit family court. And as I mentioned earlier, its jurisdiction in um, family law is in relation to um, judicial separation, uh, nullity and divorce proceedings. So it's criminal jurisdiction. So while cases will be heard of in relation to minor offence in the district courts, in the district courts, uh, the circuit court will um, try cases on indictable offences. So typically, it's cases that are more serious, and that will be heard in um, the district court, but uh, less serious than that that might be heard in the high court. So, for example, uh, cases relating to murder and rape will be heard. Um, it has original jurisdiction in the High Court to, his, to hear those types of cases, but um, more less serious offences such as um, maybe aggravated assault, um, theft, damage to property um, that aren't of a minor nature. So typically that will um, attach a term of imprisonment more than maybe 12 months will be heard in, in, in the Circuit Court. So the High Court then, so the High Court's location is in Dublin, typically, but it does travel around on circuit around the country. So you will have the High Court sitting on circuit in different locations around the country. Uh, the High Court will consist again, there's a president of the High Court and you have 37 ordinary judges um, in the High Court and you will have the president of the circuit court sitting as an ex officio member. Um, of the High Court, as I mentioned earlier. So matters will usually be heard in the High Court by one judge, but it can sit in divisional courts, which are two or maybe three judges. And its jurisdiction, again, it has original jurisdiction according to the Constitution to hear all cases um, of civil and criminal matters. So its jurisdiction is um, not local or limited like the district court and the circuit court. So just to look at some of the uh, the functions of the high court, or it's, it's jurisdiction that may be different from the district court and, and the circuit court. So it has an appellate jurisdiction, so it does hear cases on appeal from the lower courts, but it also has a supervisory, um, a supervisory function or supervisory jurisdiction. So it can sup it supervises um, decisions of inferior courts, but also um, state bodies. So one of its an example of a supervisory function uh, is judicial review. So it here 
here's judicial review cases and that is its, um, its supervisory jurisdiction. And in the context of its supervisory jurisdiction, it has the power to make orders um, either preventing an act or an action or um, mandating that a particular um, action be taken. So you have prohibitory injunctions and mandatory injunctions, which the High Court can, um, can make in relation to a remedy of a particular dispute for a particular dispute. So it also hears all civil matters typically that exceed the 75,000 limit that has been um, applied in, in, in the circuit court. It also has functions in relation to the Companies Act and I mentioned earlier now when the High Court sits um, in its civil jurisdiction in relation to um, commercial cases, typically when they're over the value of one million, it will sit as, um, as, as a commercial court to hear cases that might come under um, the Companies Act, for example. It also has full and original jurisdiction to hear all cases of a constitutional nature. So any case um, in relation to provisions of the Constitution or the fundamental rights of each citizen um, or any provision in the Constitution. So any challenges to the validity of legislation, um, whether legislation is compatible with the Constitution, for example, will be heard in, in the High Court. So it's criminal jurisdiction. So when the High Court sits in its criminal jurisdiction, it will sit as the central criminal court. And that has full and original jurisdiction under the Constitution to hear all matters of a criminal nature, and it will sit um, with a judge and jury. So until 2014, we have had the High Court and the Judicial Hierarchy and, um, and then the, the, Supreme, the Supreme Court. Um, now we also have, in between the High Court and the Supreme Court, we have a new uh, court, which is the, the Court of Appeal. And the Court of Appeal has mainly an appellate um, jurisdiction and it's set out in the Constitution, but also in the Court of Appeal Act. Um, so the Court of Appeal sits in Dublin only. There is a President of the Court of Appeal and there are nine ordinary judges that um, sit on the Court of Appeal. You will have the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court and the President of the High Court sitting as special members of the, of the Court of Appeal or ex officio members of the Court of Appeal. Matters can be heard in the Court of Appeal. Similarly to the High Court, it can sit as one judge or it can also sit in divisions of three. So as I said, it has appellate jurisdiction, so it can hear all cases um, of civil and criminal matters um, that are on appeal from the High Court or from, from the lower courts in, in limited circumstances. So the Supreme Court then, the Supreme Court is our court, um, it's our ultimate court of final resort. So it's a court of appeal. Um, it has its foundation, um, in the Constitution. It sits in Dublin in what you in the four courts um, and it will consist of a Chief Justice and nine ordinary judges. You will also have the President of the High Court and now the President of um, the, Circ the, the Court of Appeal sitting as ex officio members uh, of, the, of the Supreme Court. Matters are typic will be heard in the Supreme Court in different divisions, um, there can be a three judge Supreme Court, five judge or in exceptional cases, a seven judge Supreme Court. But if the Supreme Court is hearing cases of a constitutional nature, it will hear the case with at least uh, five members of the judiciary sitting, um, to, sitting to hear that case. So it's, it's while the Supreme Court is um, a court of final appeal. It has an appellate jurisdiction, but it also has original jurisdiction in, in two particular areas, and that's um, Article 26 and Article 12 of the Constitution. So it has um, original jurisdiction to hear Article 26 references, and Article 26 basically states that the President um, can refer bills to the Supreme Court 
to test the constitutionality of that bill. So it's a role or function of the president and the president, if it believes that a bill that's passing through the legislative process in the Oireachtas is incompatible with the constitution, it can send that bill forward to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court can um, test the constitutionality of it, whether it is compatible or not with the constitution. So it, that's um, its original jurisdiction in relation to Article 26 and also Article 12 of the constitution said that the Supreme Court is the only court that can determine whether the president is incapacitated and then, and if so, should be removed from office. So that's Article 26 and Article 12. So as I said, the Supreme Court is a court of final appeal. It's a very, it's authoritative um, in our judicial hierarchy, in, our, in the hierarchy of our courts. So it has appellate jurisdiction and often hears cases from, from um, the, lo the lower courts. But with the amendment in the constitution in relation to um, the creation of the Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal is to take over most of the backlog of cases to free up the Supreme Court for um, cases of more public general interest and public importance or constitutional matters. So um, there is exceptional appeals from the High Court and from the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court, but generally it has to meet the threshold criteria that's set out in Article 34 of the Constitution, which says the Supreme Court will hear cases on appeal from the High Court or from the Court of Appeal in two cases, and that is where the decisions involve a matter of public importance or in the interest of justice. Um, so while typically, or Going forward, cases in the High Court that have to be appealed should go to the Court of Appeal. There can be what has been termed um, a leapfrog from the High Court to the Supreme Court. Um, if the case uh, in the High Court meets the two threshold criteria that, that I have just set, set out. Um, so the Special Criminal Court, we also have a Special Criminal Court. Uh, the Special Criminal Court was set up to deal with cases of, crimin of a criminal nature um, that can't be properly heard um, in the criminal jurisdiction of the other courts um, in the hierarchy. So the district circuit um, or the, the, central, the central criminal court. So um, specifically, it sets out in the constitution um, that the legislator can establish um, special courts um, and it says where the ordinary courts are inadequate to secure the effective administration of justice and the preservation of peace or order. So one example um, of cases that go to the Special Criminal Court or that have are cases in relation to um, organised crime, where there may be issues around um, the intimidation of the jury, for example. So there's 11 members which um, are generally taken um, from the High Court, the District Court and the Circuit Court. Uh, three judges will sit to hear a case in the Special, uh, the special Criminal Court. Um, one judge from the High Court, Supreme, the, sorry, the High Court, the District Court and the Circuit Court. Um, it will sit with no jury and it will deliver one judgment. So if you're looking for uh, examples of the offences that can be taken to the Special Criminal Court, it, that's outlined in the Offences Against the State Act. So um, criminal damage or um, sheds referred to as um, scheduled offences under um, the Offences Against the State Act. But also um, there is room for appeals to the Special Criminal Court for non-scheduled offences if certified by the Director of Public Prosecution um, for it to be sent to the Special Criminal Court. So that's the hierarchy um, and the jurisdiction in the Irish court system of our courts. So you have from the Supreme Court to the District Court um, and judicial hierarchy, you have different jurisdictions, civil and, civil and criminal matter um, at, at each level. But we also have to take into account um, European courts. So because um, EU law is a primary source of Irish law, um, the European Court of Justice can hear appeal cases in relation to the interpretation or the application of EU law. 
And then, because we've incorporated the European um, Convention on Human Rights into Irish law in the European Convention on Human Rights Act, we also have to consider um, decisions of the European Court of Human Rights. So um, there is also an appeal to the European Court of Human Rights on matters related to um, the compatibility of Irish law with the Convention, for example. So that's the court system and that's the, the, the structure of the courts um, within the hierarchy of the court system as set out in our constitution and legislation. There are also um, just some final um, issues and I've already referred to them as I went through the jurisdiction um, and talked about some, some of the remedies, but it, there's remedies that apply in civil matters and criminal matters. Um, so for example, we have under the civil jurisdiction, the court, when it's resolving a dispute and it sets out its decision and will hand down um, a remedy uh, to the plaintiff, for example, it will typically be monetary compensation in, in, um, in the civil jurisdiction. So damages would, would be the, uh, the term used. It also has um, jurisdiction to hand down injunctions, declarations and specific uh, performance, which I have uh, referred to particularly um, in the area of contract law or, to or tort law um, for damages. And then the civil, the criminal um, remedy, which I have referred to, is typically will be imprisonment or, um, or a fine or um, commu community service, M maybe another um, remedy uh, in relation to, to the criminal jurisdiction. Um, so just to summarise, basically I've set out a number of questions here that you, if you want to um, do a little bit more research in this area or to think about um, the concepts and the rules and the principles and the structure and the hierarchy of the court system that, um, that I've been talking about. So what sources of law provides for the establishment of the courts? So. Um, Earlier, I have um, presented a lecture on introduction to the Irish legal system, which covers sources of law. So you might have a look, a look at that if you want a bit more detail on the sources of law. But typically the source of law here has been um, the structure and system of the court is set up by the constitution and by legislation. Uh, so we've looked at the differences in civil and uh, criminal jurisdiction and the different um, appellate and original jurisdictions in each of the court in each of the courts, the hierarchy of the courts. I've also um, just highlighted some reading here resources. So if you want to do a little bit more research or go in um, into depth or into detail a bit further, you can refer to um, Bernard McCutcheon, for example, or also there is an introduction to law handbook that will be available for you on um, the law school's website. So you might have a look at that. Thank you.